Well, we've had an FA Cup disaster and a difficult start to the season. But we've got some terrific new signings that are hopefully going to help us turn our season around. Join me for another episode of Dog Turds Into Diamonds and let's talk all about it. Yes, welcome back. We are here once again, turning dog turds into diamonds with AFC Rushton and Diamonds. Um, yes, we are, as you can see, six games into the Vanarama National League season. Um, yeah, things have not gone as well as I was hoping so far this season. Um, Last time we uh, we were here, we were getting ready for Scarborough Athletic in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. And, um, well, as you can probably guess, as we get stuck here, waiting for the schedule, what has gone on here? Oh, my goodness. All right, this is not good. This seems to happen every episode now. I'm actually really struggling. I've been trying to delete the regional leagues and every season they're still there if anybody can tell me what is going on i keep clicking to delete them they show up in red and supposedly have a date that they're going to leave at the end of the season and then the following season they are still there so i've got all those leagues still running now six seasons in um generating all sorts of data and um yeah it's um it's leading to a few moments where it's uh, kind of slowing down. I really need to get rid of those leagues. Um, all right. Well, when you were last here, we played Chesterfield to start the season and then older shot away. We got four points from the first few games of the season. It was a decent start. After you left, we then went away to Telford and we lost 1-0. But, I mean, we were the better team here. And unfortunately, we suffered a red card as we now go into another long pause waiting for this to load. Oh, man. Uh, let's see how this is going to go this episode. Um, so you can see in the 67th minute, Evans got a red card. We have been playing without uh, getting stuck in, which I was hoping would improve our card situation and our discipline. It's not really seeming to have much effect at the moment, apart from making us less physically competitive in the games. Evans got his second yellow card in the 67th minute. We were the better team here. We had more possession, more shots, more shots on target. Um, we were the better team. We just could not create a chance. Really, really struggling. And in the 86th minute, Murphy comes up with a winner on the break. We lose 1-0, first defeat of the season. Isaac Smith played really poorly at the back as well. Just a, a real, really, I mean, I want to say average performance. In terms of the game stats, the performance looked good. But when you look at everybody's player ratings, um, yeah, it was, it was below average. Sam Blair, the only player over a 7 rating. So that was disappointing, but I kind of put it down to the red card. I, I kind of moved on from it. We then went and played Scarborough Athletic at home in the FA, FA Cup fourth qualifying round. As you can see, we drew 1-1. It went to a replay. They were the better team here. Although, again, you see we had loads of possession. We, it says we had more shots, although not as many on target as Scarborough Athletic. We had a much lower XG than them. Um, I kind of felt that we were lucky to take it to a replay. But I was still confident of getting the job done against a team from a lower division. Now here, I actually made a few changes. I was giving some new sign-ins game time. Um, I'll introduce them in a second, but you can see there. Cornish played in midfield, had a decent enough game. Staunton played at the back. I also put McAvoy and gallagher Allison in the fullback positions. Um, just trying to give a, a few players a rest. I thought it was a game I could afford to do that. And um, yeah, in the end, we needed a, a, a Reeves equaliser in the 57th minute to, uh, to take it to a replay. And uh, yeah, very, very frustrating. 
we then put in an absolutely abysmal performance in the replay three days later. Here I was playing what I thought was more or less my strongest team, although I did bring in uh, Zidane Iqbal in the number 10 position. Gibbs was pretty tired after the first game. Matruk and Hughes on the wings played absolutely terribly. Isaac Smith, again, was really disappointing, as was Givens. Sheaf, another new signing, started in midfield, was uh, average at best, and Zidane Iqbal was terrible, as was Joe Hardy. Uh, we were second best throughout. We were 2-0 down after 39 minutes. Um, a whole bunch of bookings once again, and we were out of the FA Cup. Now, the board had a, a requirement to get to the first round proper. We would have been away at Blackpool in the first round, which would have been a decent little payday. We didn't make it. It's Financially, it is a disaster to not play in the FA Cup first round. Um, but the performance was really, really concerning. You can see really struggling for goals. In those first five games of the season, we only scored in two of them. Really, really poor. So I then made the decision to make a formation change. I went back to the 4-3-1-2 that we used in our second season in the Southern Premier League. And, um, well, I mean, it does seem to have helped us, certainly in terms of the goal scoring. We took on Solly Hole Moors at home in the Vanarama National League. We beat them 2-1. And it was uh, Sheaf on his league debut uh, got us off to a, a flying start in the 59th minute, flying start to the second half. And Joe Hardy then won and converted a penalty. They got a late equaliser and then there was an 88th minute penalty save from Sam Blair. So although you look at the stats and we fully deserve the win, we, we did rely on that penalty save to not come away with a draw. So it was a, a, a little bit nervy at the end there. But um, it was it was pleasing to get two goals after making that formation change. We then went away to Fylde, who were fourth in the league, and we got back-to-back -back wins. This was so pleasing. Fylde uh, did really well last season, almost went up. And looking at the stats, they probably were a little bit better here, but we did have the better XG in the game and we had more possession. We went 2-1 down. Taylor got his first goal of the season for us. First goal of his AFC Russian and Diamonds career. But it was Joe Hardy, assisted by Gibbs on both occasions. Brilliant Gibbs through balls. And Joe Hardy getting two more goals. So he was now 3-2 at this point. A really, really good performance. We did have to tweak things in the game. We had to play to get stuck in. Isaac Smith was poor again at the back. This is concerning. Um, Isaac Smith, on paper, is a fantastic player for the Vanarama National League. Um, I mean, he is losing some ability, just with, again, with the, the lack of training that we have. He's been with us two seasons now, or he's, he's in his second season. He's gone down to no, only nine heading, but I mean, he's got 13 tackling, 10 marking, nine heading, 10 first touch and 10 passing. Brilliant mentals. He's a great athlete. We, sh we should be getting big performances out of the ex-Manchester City man, and he's really, really struggling. We've got to see what happens with him, um, but it was nice to get back-to-back -back wins. Now, the problem with this formation is the fact that we're not playing with wingers. So it does make it, I've just clicked on Woking there rather than clicking on the uh, the result of the game. Um, let's go back there. Now the problem is that we cannot mark naturally the fullbacks of the opposition team. And Woking caused us big problems here by not having anybody that could, that could naturally shut down their fullbacks. They really took advantage of us. They went 2-0 up, you can see, in the first half. We did, after that, get our act together and we really put the pressure on them. Joe Hardy had two goals disallowed. Their second goal, I felt, was maybe offside. Joe Hardy did eventually get one back. Four in three games for him. Got one back in the 84th minute. 
but it wasn't enough. We went down to our first home defeat of the season. Very, very disappointing. Um, we could have done with those three back-to-back wins. And we now have to take on Newport County, who are top of the league. If we look at the table, we are sitting in ninth, but we've got a game in hand. In theory, if we win that game in hand, which is now against New- Newport County, we could go second in the league uh, with a with a big enough goal difference, obviously. But um, yeah, we're only three points behind second and a host of other teams, including Woking, who are now sixth place. Um, Newport County are undefeated uh, on 19 points. So in theory, this is going to be a really tough game. But I've had a look at their team and I don't think they're particularly good. I think man for man, we have now got a very good team. And I'll show you why. Because we have made a whole host of new signings. You remember next episode, or last episode, next episode? Looking into the future now. The um, the last episode, we had five players waiting to be confirmed. I didn't confirm them all, but I did get all the ones I wanted, apart from the left back. The left back that I'd offered a contract to did go elsewhere, but I got four I think, incredible players that can really make a difference in our season here. The first was Josh Staunton. I've been playing him as a central defender, but looking at him, I think he's going to end up being our right back for this season. I think he is an absolutely ideal right back for for the Vanarama National League. You can see mentally he is excellent. Really, really good. He's a decent athlete. He's six foot one, great jumping reach, great heading. Marking lets him down a bit, but his first touch and pass him for a centre back, and our possession game is excellent. So, I mean, he's come straight in. He's played four games now. He's still not completely fully fit, but um, he is certainly getting there in terms of his match sharpness. And, I mean, He's not set the world alight so far, but I think he is a real difference maker. He is definitely our best defender. He's an upgrade on what we had, and I think he's going to work out really, really well. I think he can help us go to another level. Now we've got Sam Cornish, 25-year-old central midfielder, defensive midfielder. He did have 15 tackling when I bought him. He has now come down to 14 tackling. He's only played five games. He's already lost a tackling point. But um, yeah, look at this. 14 first touch, 14 tackling, 12 marking, 10 passing, um, 14 teamwork, 14 determination, 15 decisions and 12 concentration, along with 15 aggression. Okay, he, he is an absolute snail. He cannot run at all. But as a defensive midfielder, just sitting in front of the defence, as a ball-winning midfielder and just spraying the ball around to the more able players, I think he's absolutely awesome. I think he's going to make uh, a massive difference in the midfield. You see, last season he played Vanarama National League for Aldershot, barely played. Um, most of his experience is in the Vanarama North and South But um, I guess that's maybe because of his physical limitations. But I think for us, he is going to be superb. He's got 6.98 rating from his first five games. I think he's going to be really, really good. So I'm pleased to have Sam Cornish in. Now, these last two hopefully can make a big difference at the other end of the pitch. Max Sheaf, he had a number of Vanarama National League clubs that offered him contracts after we did. Fortunately, he cho- he chose us, and look, he is a great creative midfielder. 11 passing, 11 vision, 11 first touch, takes a really good free kick, and he's got great finishing. I mean, looking at him, I think he could play as a striker. At 26, is he too old to be converted into a striker? I think he'd be a fantastic, um, a fantastic uh, forward. Um, He wants to play as a central midfielder. I have agreed that in his contract. Um, But uh, I think he could really, really do a job further up the pitch as well. Brilliant mentally. Decent enough athlete. Great technically. I think we've got a a really special 
Vanarama National League player on our hands here. Hopefully he's going to make a big difference. He's already got his first goal for the team. Um, he's another one that still has not found his total match sharpness. But I think he is going to be a real star. And he's here for two two years. Finally, we've got George Lloyd. Very, uh, very close name to uh, somebody very well known in American political circles now. But let's not talk about that. Uh, George Lloyd is a superb athlete, a striker, only five foot eight, but he's very quick, um, great agility. He can dribble, he can finish, he can, uh, he can, well, kind of head, I guess, but he's got great first touch as well. Um, really good teamwork, great off the ball. Decisions not the best, but his composure and anticipation for a striker, absolutely superb. He's on the bench today. He's only just signed. He's on £575 a week, so he's one of the top earners. Um, he likes to beat the offside trap, which I think is great. I think he can be a very special Vanarama National League striker. If we compare him to James Price, who has obviously been our, our main striker the last two years. You can see there from the, the polygon, he is clearly better. They are supposedly the same technically i mean james price does have those great penalties and he's great finishing and first touch mentally they're rated the same but then physically george lloyd is the better player so um there maybe they don't look so different but i think george lloyd is an upgrade and hopefully he is going to do very very well and help turn our season around and it's needed because well Joe Hardy has now started scoring, fortunately, but James Price has been terrible so far this season. He had a poor um, preseason, and since the season has started, you can see he's got no goals in four, a 6.55 rating. Very, very disappointing. Hopefully, he can turn that around, but, uh, I mean, George Lloyd hopefully will hit the ground running and not give him that chance. I'm also, I mean, although I've made this uh, this formation change, I'm also hoping that George Lloyd can be that next level striker for us and eliminate the need for me to play two up front. I really want to play with the wingers. I just think it gives so much more defensive stability. Um, I mean, we did get done by Woken. It was really, really clear that it was down to us not having wingers on the field to track their fullbacks. So I would like to change back, but to do that, I've got to know that the, the, the central striker can do the job there. Um, I, I don't really want to play two up front and sacrifice the wingers, but it's what we're doing at the moment just to try and get some results. Um, this is the, the team for today's game. You can see uh, we do have some fitness issues. Max Sheaf, Zidane Iqbal, Liam Gibbs and Joe Hardy are all very tired. But we've got to rest after this game. I, we're playing top of the league. I've got to try and go as strong as I can. Um, we've got Sam Blair in goal. Gibbons and Evans, who were suspended last game, are fully fit and back in the team. Uh, Isaac Smith and Josh Staunton are the centre-backs. Max Sheaf is going to start in midfield. But, I mean, again, he's still getting his fitness up. He's getting very tired early on in games. He pr he's not going to last the 90 minutes, but we'll see what we can get out of him. Crowsdale is going to be the ball winning midfielder to start with. Um, that is because Sam Cornish is also very, very tired. Zidane Iqbal will start as a deep line playmaker in this midfield three. I'm trying to have a, a, a deep line playmaker and an advanced playmaker. I'm basically with the idea of one serving the other. So Iqbal picks it up. Uh, early on in the play and then moves it forward into these front three and Gibbs then helps finish off the moves. That's the thinking behind it. We'll see how it works. Uh, Liam Gibbs is the number 10, Joe Hardy and Sam Taylor up front and with George Lloyd coming into on the bench, James Price is dropped. Now I'm going to take McAvoy out. He can play centre-back or right-back. Uh, I'm going to bring the captain George Ray in and that is with the idea that maybe if I bring George Ray into Staunton's position, Staunton 
could go to right back. Uh, so Cornish and Matt Butcher, I've still got him on the transfer list. Ebsfleet and Barrow are interested, but he's actually been performing pretty well. So I might rethink um, whether he is to leave the club or not. He's out of contract at the end of the year anyway. Uh, Thomas Hughes and George Lloyd make up the bench there. And just before we go into the game, I'll just show you how all of these new signings have affected the finances. We are now paying around £600 a week over the wage budget. Um, so yeah, I could do with moving on Butcher if an offer comes in for him. That would virtually get us back down to budget. Um, but right now, I mean, our contract is up at the end of this season. So again, now we've gone out of the FA Cup, we have got to have a great season in the league to earn a new contract. But if we are deemed to be irresponsible with the wages, it might be they don't even want to offer us a contract. So we're under a bit of pressure to get results for the rest of the season now and hopefully get our new contract. Or this could be the last season of the save. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the situation there. We have, we're 230,000 in debt, having gone out of the FA Cup. Um, we've we've eliminated that possible revenue stream there so that's disappointing we've now just got to really go for it in the league and at least make playoffs this season basically all of these big name players that undoubtedly improve us as a squad uh they have all stipulated they they want us to make playoffs this season so if we don't again we're gonna have a lot of unhappy players uh, so there's pressure all round, really, to get a new contract, to keep the squad together. And I have to say, although I still think we can improve in the wing-back positions, I think we could improve by getting a next-level centre-back. Outside of that, I think this is the best squad that we have had in our time at AFC Russian and Diamonds. I think it is a squad that can compete for the playoffs. So, I mean, we've, we've just got to really go out and, and make that happen now. And it starts here. What number are we going to give George Lloyd? Um, I think we'll give him the number 24. There you go. Um, yeah, I think we can make that happen. But we've got to get our act together quick. Because the season has not started well. It's been average at best. Um, we've got to stop the slide. And really start to use this new quality of player that we've got. I think once they start gelling. If we've got our tactics right. I think we can start really really uh, pulling up some trees in the Vanarama National League. I'm not saying that I think we can compete for the title, but I do feel like we are a team capable of getting into those playoffs. I'm just going to make Crowsdale a ball-winning midfielder uh, rather than a central midfielder. I think that's his best role. And let's just have a look. Now that I didn't check their formation. Are they playing a number 10? They are not playing a number 10. They are playing uh, a... Uh, a four, a four, three, three. So I'm not going to worry too much about setting up any specific marking for this game. Um, apart from, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to leave it as it is. I'll show you how we're playing with this new formation. We are playing out from the back. I'm going to see how that works because with them playing three attackers, that's going to put us under pressure at the back there. No specific uh, instructions about how to get. Our shots away. We are not passing into space. We don't have the quickest strikers. It's not really working for us. But we are still trying to play a short possession game. In transition, we are going into the playmaker. We've got those midfield three. Hopefully, we can get uh, Iqbal free to receive the ball. If not, we can start going into the strikers now that we're playing uh, with two up front. And at the back, I'm still playing a high defensive line. But I was looking through... Our averages for the squad and we are a little bit below the league average for speed I think that might be part of the defensive problems that we've had so I might drop this defensive line back I'll see how the game is going but I think we might have to start playing with a deeper defensive line what I am going to do just because we're up against the top team in the league as I'm going to drop our line of engagement back I'm not going to get stuck in to start with but expect that to be something that happens quite quite quick early on if we are if we are under pressure i am trying to use tighter marking uh, again just to clear up the amount of chances that we've been giving up in the first games of the season so 
Let's see what we can do. The pressure is all on them. I'm not going with my assistant. I'm not going to tell them there's no pressure. We are definitely under pressure. But I am going to tell them that we can go out and cause a shock here, hopefully. So we are playing in our beautiful third strip, which unfortunately there's no official picture for in the in-game. But it's a lovely combination of colours and pattern. Um, yeah, let's see if we can have a little bit of a an upset here and kind of announce ourselves as a player in this league. Corner headed away. Hardy grabs it. Hardy, can he make it five in four with another goal today? That would be very nice to see. Big long ball up. Taylor can't get hold of it. It was nowhere near him. Isaac Smith has been, I think that was Isaac Smith. He's been really poor with his distribution at the back. Um, which is surprising for someone with, for a centre back with 10 passing. We now get a highlight in their half. Can we get a crossing? Gibbons back into Hardy, off the woodwork and out. I don't know how the physics of that worked for it to hit the woodwork and then go out of play from that angle. But let's encourage the team, see if we can get some more here. We are the better team. Look, if you look at the stats, we have had more shots. We've had more shots on target. Hardy gets in down the line. Can Taylor get into the box here? We've lost it. And they are now getting the chance to break. And this is how a lot of our highlights seem to go. That we start with the attack. And we then lose possession. And it ends up in the back of our own net. They now hit the woodwork. And Evans with an absolutely crazy back pass. Concedes the corner. And that is over the bar and we've survived. Woking beating Yeovil. So maybe our defeat to Woking doesn't look so bad. They are in the playoff positions and going well so far this season. Let's demand more. They have now had more shots than us. They've had more possession. It goes back to Sam Blair. And can we start an attack from this? It's a very close game. We are giving a good account of ourselves against the top team. Taylor and Hardy combine. And Hardy hits the post. Oh, man. Gibbs is shattered. As is Hardy. As is Iqbal. As is Sheaf. We we have a very tired team on our hands here. But we have been playing very, very well so far. Let's um, go on. We're doing well. Keep working hard until full time. I'm going with the assistant. We can be really pleased with that, but we've got to make it count before our players are absolutely dead on their feet. Evans just managing to hang on to the ball. Taylor linking up there. Crowsdale out to Sheaf. Sheaf finds Hardy with a lovely through ball. Hardy goes down and he's got a penalty, which I think he will take. Come on, Joe Hardy. Five in four games if he makes this. Come on, Joe. He's missed it. He's put in the rebound. Come on, Joe Hardy. He's finally starting to fulfill that potential that we saw when we signed him last season. And playing in a, an attacking front two, he just seems a different player completely. Playing up on his own just doesn't really have the presence. But in a two, he's having a fantastic season so far as we now get a corner. Headed out. And Beckett Nichols gets them away on the break. Can we, for once, just defend a lead straight after scoring? We have a, a real history of conceding within minutes of going in front in games. And they now have a decent spell of possession here. Do I switch to the wingers to try and prevent this play here as Taylor gets in on the break? And it's a big save. That would have been absolutely huge to go 2-0 up there. And we have started the second half really, really well. They get the throw, but it's in their half. If we can win it back here, we could be in on goal again as they go out to the fullback. Do I change formation? Do I change formation? I really don't know what to do. I've got an idea which maybe doesn't involve wingers, but does allow us to make that change as they get the switch. And Bins has missed... An absolute sitter. I'm going to make a change here on the half hour mark. 
We've got a lot of tired legs out there. Who am I going to bring off? Um, I think I'm going to leave Sheaf on because he's playing so well. Zidane Iqbal is going to change for Sam Cornish. Just with his decent passing, I'm going to bring him on as a Misala to just occupy a little bit more of those wings. I mean, he's got decent playmaking ability, but he's a great tackler as well. So I'm going to bring him on. And then I think the other change I need to make is Liam Gibbs. He's absolutely shattered here. And I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, oh, I am really, really struggling. I'm really struggling to make a decision here. Do I go to the wingers? Or do I stick? Ah, oh, I think I am going to go to the wingers. I am. I'm going to do it. So Liam Gibbs, I'm going to change up for Thomas Hughes. And I'm going to put him out onto the left wing. So Thomas Hughes here is going to be an inside forward. And Joe Hardy goes to the right wing. And he is going to be a winger on the on attack. Taylor will play through the middle on his own. Hopefully he can do that. His passing is not great for link-up play, but hopefully he can do us a job there. And I'm just going to set Hardy and Hughes to mark their, their fullbacks. Um, I really think that is where we are going to come unstuck if I leave things the way they are. So we're just making that change there. That's all I'm going to do for the moment. George Lloyd's debut has to wait for the moment. Let's see if we can just get a little bit more control of this game now. And see if we can dig out a huge, huge result against the top of the league. Let's praise the players. Try and get confidence up to end the game. They are now getting more shots, but they've had few on target. I'm going to pause it there and just make another change. Because Sheaf is shattered. And I've got Matt Butcher who I think can really help us to see this one out. Um, I'm going to make... I'm going to make Matt Butcher a deep line playmaker, but on defend. So he's going to be defensive minded. And now we've just got a player just still to make those, uh, those plays through the midfield. So Joe Hardy is shattered, as is Gibbons at right back. But we now have, hopefully, a more solid midfield and I'm going to take off the overlaps fullbacks just staying back a little bit and I'm going to start a bit of time wasting I'm really pleased actually that we've managed to be playing out from the back and control the game I tell you what let's just shoot on site as well just any chance that comes our way let's just take it hold our shape slow down the play from the goalkeeper and I'm going to get stuck in for the end of the game as well just going to really try and Really try and make sure we, we do everything possible to be tough to beat and see this game out in the last 10 minutes. It would be a huge, huge result. And I praise the players again. And I'm now just going to go full out time wasting. Hopefully there is no late highlight in this. We have got... Oh my, no way. Oh, football manager. I absolutely hate you. Dear God. Hannah completely unmarked. How on earth has he got a free header there? I do not believe it. 90 plus 5. Ah. Oh. And my mood has completely changed at the end of that game. Oh. oh, man. Come on, let's take the positives here. Let's take the positives. We've got a draw away at the top of the league. A very good performance. We've still got that game in hand, which would put us in the playoff places. Let's be positive. PMA. As the players continue to gel, hopefully we can go forward from here and have a really good strong season. We've got a long break now. 
We've got a week until Chesterfield, which is not going to be easy. It's another team away from home that are up in the top positions. They are sixth now, two points ahead of us. Again, if we can get another positive result there, at least get a point out of it. I mean, those are some big away games that uh, that we've got out of the way and got something from. Let's try and keep positive. Ah, oh, I'm absolutely gutted, but let's let's just try and look on the bright side of life, right? It's a game without defeat. Notts County at home is going to be tough, I, I think, but we will probably be back somewhere in here in December. Um, maybe for the FA Trophy, maybe a double header. Dagenham and Redbridge at home could be a tough game. I'll have a look and see how things are looking in December. See who the top teams are. Um, we'll see you then for another episode of Dog Turns Into Diamonds. What a horrific way to finish today's episode. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this episode, you can drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. Hopefully, we can turn things around here and make sure this is not the last season of this save. See you next time for another Dog Turns Into Diamonds. Bye for now.